there would be no black folks, and basically it's electrical energy and it's light energy. Same thing. It's all electrical. Okay? You're seeing a shot frozen from H1 ACE, which is H1 A ACE, okay? And basically you have here the darkness of space and it's just all layers and lighting, okay? So Venus is over here, okay? And it's been doing its coronal mass ejection atmosphere reaction to a CME from the sun. This is not a CME from the sun. This is a uh, possible quasar action, which is which is massive. Everything's safe, okay? What is startling is this freaks physicists out and stuff when they see stuff like this. And it's not the first time they've seen things like this, but when we are getting a higher activity of stuff like this. Now this big swoop down through here is also sheets of light, but it's crossing with all of this, which is not off the sun. It's too huge, and you'll see when I play the player. Now, there is astronomical everything here in this shot. The closest thing you see, is Mercury is just a moon. Okay, It's the same size as the moon. It's basically a moon of whatever. It doesn't matter at this point in time to get into an argument on that. You see this arc that we're getting over top of Venus. As that energy went black here, okay, which is normally a CME, but in this freezing of a frame, and I can step, and I'll step, and then we have the sun. You see, that's how fast that electrical energy comes in, okay? Uh, basically from uh, deep in outer space, okay? And then we're going to watch this action here. I'll hit play to save some video time here. And this is, okay, that's getting drawn back into the sun there. Okay. As you see, we're getting lots of action. Okay. That is basically high odds that it's Venus. Okay. And then this here, since it doesn't have a magnetical and it keeps getting brighter, it is highly odds, more than likely, Ison, either that or the only other thing that could be bright and not seeing a magnetical line would be Cyrus, okay? Now, no matter what, when we're looking at A ahead, okay? Now, when you go to B from behind, you got to remember that it could be 360 degrees, okay? And let me give you an actual factual on that. When we're on B, we have to narrow stuff down. This is basically what is flaring lower right hand from when you're watching behind videos. This is basically should be Mercury because it's the closest thing to the Sun. Okay? And when we look at the map, I can bring the map up while we're talking here and then and basically I can't, as you can see here, I can't flip the map. Okay? That's software engineering that basically uh, NASA's got programmed in there. And there's nodes here also that planets, they know that when I basically, I'll zoom in and show you this here real fast why I'm here, that every one of these little nodes is different, and each one of these are known to do certain, just like a satellite, they do certain rotations and maneuvers, okay, around the sun, and as I, so every one of those nodes is actually specific, and people haven't realized that before. Now, as you see, Mercury's not got a perfectly centered orbit, either does Venus, the Earth, we pretty much do have somewhat of a centered rotation, and that's what keeps Earth hiding out in a little rabbit hole, and we'll get into that a lot in the future. It takes way more than one video, tons of videos, infinite amount of dust to explain real space and everything like that. Now, when you're looking from behind, basically you got to remember that they could flip it all the way up, side down, and you have to realize that, okay, from the angle that they could be shooting at. Now, let me explain that. Basically, real fast, we can pop in here. The idea that, remember, the lens on the camera, it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong, and also no matter what, they can turn the satellite. And I'd have a video that I could show you too on that, and I'll try to put it in at the very end of this, okay? But what we need to keep in mind is no matter what, that when we're on ahead, we can know what we're looking at, Mercury or Venus, because it's the biggest thing, it's closest thing to satellite. Remember when we're on behind, when we're not at ACE, when we're not at A, we're not at 1, the idea that no matter what, we will know what Mercury and Venus look like because Venus will be the biggest thing. On this, we always have to deduct, okay? And no matter what, 
I'm pretty darn sure that this is Mercury from shooting all the way behind stereo behind H1. It's the closest thing to the sun. It'll show up good. This is Venus up here, and this is our other object that we're trying to nail it down to that basically it op should be. We're over at Ace, and absolutely this is our object, which more than likely it's becoming more odds that it's that's basically ice on. Okay? And then there's going to be electrical activity. Now, this is going backwards. It's drawing this stuff back into the sun. Let's go. So we're going forward. So you're actually seeing forward clock progression. There's the sun. So that's not the sun up over here. And as you see that, that is a very important element, that upper mark on the magnetical of Venus that has got that. And as you see, they're starting to not want us to see. But that could be another planet in alignment with Venus too, and that could be Saturn all the way hell out there. And then you have to go to JPL for that. Let's zoom in on our object up here. And this is why they've been held in this footage back for a while. First I go to 400 and get up there and look at it. See, there's no magnetical on it, you see. It's either Cyrus or, and then as you know, if we can see a dove, we can't see the magnetical of whatever the heck that is way the heck back there. And they're doing CME, uh, reactive atmospheric flares to the CME of the sun, okay? And remember that all of this other action, I gotta pop out real fast to make you realize that, that this other light action we're seeing coming in, it's huge, it's not the sun. It's way out, things that are larger than the sun, 78 times the size of the sun and so forth and so on, okay? Other stars, electrical, and then shooting through space, okay? So, we gotta keep an eye, this could be just a planet up there, Okay, and then what we're going to nail down is through constellations and stuff, and people can put their suggestions in, okay, what planet is it up there? Okay, and is it just Venus doing this, or is it a combination of Venus and Saturn and other planets, and we've had, got the eight magneticals and stuff on the other one. And I'm going to have another video showing you some high footage and a little bit earlier of this. And I just did make a mistake of on one shot. I was saying Earth could be over here, and actually Earth would be over here on that shot. And because no matter what, this is... Mercury, this is Venus, and no matter what, that object there is in between, and I have to go to magnifier for this, and then I'll just hit the play, and I gotta get it, hopefully get it pulled over, however way I gotta do that, but no matter what, you get blown up on, on the shot, and it's basically a movie, but it doesn't do too much, hopefully I can get it just like this, but see, it, it's hard, to, and maneuvering around trying to fight whatever we're fighting which we shouldn't be fighting but boom boom right there you see so basically you got mercury to the left that's your magnetic line to the left and that object is no matter what something is between and like i say is going to be when you watch the other video that mercury has always got the inside rail like horses on a, on a pony race okay it's got the rail okay it's so no matter what this thing could curve way out this way or wherever and come in but it's going to end up going around the sun it just depends on we'll have to keep an eye on that object right there so there is an object there no matter what it's big it's bright we know the sun's to the right because the whiteness of these planets is on the right hand side so that's facing there and we are looking at a head so it's really cool on a head because you keep a very much and then you can always deduct and nail it down to the actual factual on the other side on B. And I've always told you layers, 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 right? And there's the meatball, okay? Everybody's, oh, it's not out there, it's not out there. Okay, there it is. Because you get layers and layers and layers. And we've got Venus over here, Mercury there, and this is here. And yes, this is around close by the back door darkness of space by Earth, as you can see. And as you can see, it's there. And I'll zoom in on it a little bit more, and it's real round. And you get, uh, basically, you can do it right here. And we'll zoom in on this shot and basically show you we're here, we're at Sechi, this is a shot, and then we were zoom in, and this is going to freak you out, we ain't going to use a magnifier, because a magnifier, will, it's it's great, but at the first point, then I can point, and as you can see, we get layers and layers and layers here, as basically Mother Nature, and everybody wants to be, well, yeah, God, and anything like that, yes, and see how it's not, and then we have stars that circulate around it, that try to stay away from it, as you can see there, and if anybody wants to say, well, then it's just stars, uh, we know that they're basically, they're electrical magneting to each other out there, and, and the, the, yes, yes, but it's also the very outside darkness of the roundness of the magnetical ball that's out there between us and the sun. It's always there, it's always been there, and it's always been known to be the meatball, 
And as you can see up here, perfectly round. It's so damn huge. How can you tell if it's really perfectly round? And with the shot here, it's optics, but no matter what, it's out there in the darkness of space. And that is Mercury there, okay? And there's massive distances between that. That could be so damn far away from Earth and us and everything like that, but no matter what, it's a presence that's out there in space, and it's the meatball. And it's huge, okay? And layers, 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 but an electrical shock from outer space, and then we get the actual factual, and then I basically will go into, and then you also know the uh, umbilical cord of space. It actually, yes, it might be an illusion that we've always known about the meatball when they're looking off into space, but the actual factual, we have the umbilical cord. If they would, if they would more, that the idea that the sun is tied to an umbilical cord out in space, and basically it's like DNA makeup, and then it just keeps on, and then we can get away from the scariness that if there's actually, so no matter what, there's that stars out there in space, no matter what, okay? And if that did that flare, then you see there's Mercury there, and this is more than likely the umbilical cord of the suns and the stars, and we have electrical action going off out there in space, no matter what. So, meatball might be an optical illusion of all times, and then when the astronauts, what they've seen and so forth, but there's huge stuff that's out there in space. There's tons, it's crowded out there, okay? But there's massive distances between things, okay? And then, uh, let's get down here. But let's stay on base where the idea that we are looking for, and I'll hit play, we are looking for what's closest and what the electrical energy is going on out there in space. And Venus is doing that with more than likely Saturn and other stuff. And let's go to B real fast because we're at A. And here's our comet that came in and did all this electrical disturbance that we've got, okay? And it's huge. And what we're gonna, we'll have to nail down here in the future is hopefully that this is just Mercury that we see there and that this comet came in and it disturbed the electrical energy at the sun. And then we got to see all the stuff that you got to get a good pretty view of because the actual factual, that, that comet right there that we're gonna go up and take a good look at has basically came up that we this more, more than I mean it's there's so many betting odds and proportional integral derivatives here that that's the comet and then we'll be able when we get the 11th footage and so forth and so on we'll be able to see and watch this huge comet and yes this stuff happens out there in space and that's why we got to keep an eye on it all the time and it's great to our tax dollars we should never stop getting these shots because the satellites are working and it's all scientifical, and then the community at large gets to be calm and reactive, then the markets and everything stays out, oh, hella cool. Nobody scares anybody that the end of the world's coming, okay? So this comet came by, and that's more than likely got to be Mercury, because it's the closest thing to the sun that the sun would get, a, that the B shot, and we're not at ACE, that would get this great shot. And as you see, the action is pretty much, the sun's over here, okay? That's the sun, doing the CME reactive, and we're at B. Go back up. That's the magnetical more than likely of Mercury, which is the same size as the moon. So realize that this comet wasn't that damn huge, okay? Because when it gets that close to Mercury, then we know that the comet was smaller than, uh, even if, it, but then again, distance. It could be light years or whatever the heck, or, I mean, astronomical, about a million. This is millions of miles, because we got that nailed down. It should be just millions of miles. But it's one of the comets that came by. And then we'll try to nail it down to which one it is at a certain time because basically we can work off of the actual factual. And let's just, get, I'm going to give you a really, I'm going to stop and get a big zoom in. So we've got a big zoom in here of the comet because basically there it's Mercury to the left. And then I'll just zoom over and watch the comet. So, there's our fireball. All right, so basically, it, it being distances away from Mercury, it's probably maybe, it could be anywhere 10 times the size of Mercury, okay? 
but actual factual, that's what disturbed it and gave us all that electrical energy, and then you'll see.